He must have told them we were coming. That's the moment. I'm like, what kind of physics is that? That car's going 60 and you just like step out and do a little jig. I like the way he <laughs> that little stumble here. He looking to shove out the buffalo. That little tap dance when he got in. I gotta be me. I don't hurt my ankle. And then he's like, he's like, he's like, play me off, Johnny. <laughs> but I love it. I've, I've been announcing it, but I'm gonna announce it again, that we have sold out all of our highest tier tickets for Double Toasted Live in Brooklyn, New York. That's gonna be April 1st. Now, I was wondering about this last week when we <clears throat> voted on this, because last week the theme that Kevin came up with is <clears throat> superhero movies that aren't Marvel, are DC. We hear about them all the time. We talk about them all the time. But, you know, there's been other superhero movies out there that are not even Marvel or DC and not even real conventional superheroes. And this movie actually works perfect for all the superhero movies that are coming out today. Historically, it's bad, if you ask me. It's worth talking about. There's a lot of cool things in here, a lot of fun things in here to make fun of and discuss. But it does have some historical context to it. are legendary. This is the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Has a lot of historical context to it. For one, the movie was so bad that Sean Connery said, I quit acting. He said, this is the last time. He actually said, after this movie, he said, you know what? I'm just tired of dealing with idiots out there. I'm sick of it. And it don't get no more idiotic than LXG. Now, this is based on the graphic novel from Alan Moore and who else was involved with this? Kevin Alan O'Neill. Moore and Kevin O'Neill was the artist. This came out in 1999. Uh, they had, uh, 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 oh, did they have like a couple of sequels to this? Oh, yeah, several. Several, because they have a, a collection of these. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, surprise, surprise, the movie is nothing like the books. But, <laughs> but still, still, listen, and I don't expect them to take this because that book was kind of problematic a little bit. Well, it was it was dark on purpose. You know, it was it was edgy. It was like, yeah, hey, we're, we're taking these these uh, characters from from classic literature who are all in public domain, by the way. Yeah. Um, and ah. just teaming them up <clears throat> and showing them to be, you know, very flawed. As a matter of fact, the Invisible Man was a straight out rapist. Yeah, the, the, the dicks that they are. Yeah. They're pretty much criminals, rapists, drug addicts. Mm hmm. Murderers. Now you, murderers. Now, you can't put that. I mean, and we all know if you read some of these books, you know that they're, they're based they're based on uh, fantasy characters and creatures. But some of those were actually considered to be horror creatures or characters from the time, like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde or the Invisible Man. You know, they did some shady shit. So they're considered to be kind of horror. So it's appropriate for them to be horrible people. Now, they want to take this and make it into a movie and change that all that controversial stuff around and say, you know, we're not gonna be talking about their flaws. We're gonna make them superheroes. And I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem with taking that and kind of modifying it to make it a superhero movie. Uh, Cause it's a pretty cool idea. So you're taking these Victorian age literary figures like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Alan Quartermain, who's an adventurer, the invisible man, trying to use their powers for good. Now this is significant right here too, because this came out in 2003. Now, if they had actually done it right, if they had actually came in and not been st stupid with this, they would have been ahead of the game. This came out in 2003. Avengers came out in 2012. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that this would be like, they would be the next Marvel or anything like that, but if they had played it right and made a good movie, they would have beat the Avengers at making the big screen, big budget superhero team up. So as with a lot of these movies, I mean, cause it's still following what, what, what the Avengers did. So you got this big shadowy figure that's trying to go in. And of course, you know, this is uh, so this is the 1800s, this is Victorian age. So, you know, this is, we're talking about, you know, they're trying to do the universe, you know, they're trying to rule the universe, take over the galaxy. You know, they did simpler plans. They just want world domination. Sure. Pre-Nazis. Exactly. So you got some mysterious figure out there turning countries against each other. And 
hey, normal human beings are not going to be able to take care of this. This is a threat that's bigger than that. We need to bring in special people with powers and monsters to take care of this fool over here. And that's when they called these well, considered to be Victorian age superheroes to be the extraordinary, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. This movie, when I watched it, man, I mean, you're talking about messing up right off the bat. So, you know, I don't remember a whole lot about this film. Like, I don't remember a lot about a lot of these movies that we watch. Sure. You know, yeah. and it's, it's always kind of fun catching up. Yeah, yeah. What, tw tw 22, 25 yeah. years ago? 20 years ago? But a lot of these movies, you know, you kind of give them a chance. You know, some of these bigger budget movies. There's some movies that are just bad right off the bat, and then there's some bigger budget movies where, you know, you don't. They don't. The setup is good. Everything is cool. It usually takes a while to rev up and get to that that part where they get the bad reputation from. Mm -hmm. Not this. I knew this was gonna be dumb right off the bat. I knew this was gonna be dumb, and I saw this stupid ass right here. <laughs> I mean, his, like, last, his last word it was, was oh! in the name of the law. Yeah. Oh, in that case, <laughs> it 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 picked up a little bit. You know, it played on things that we like, like inside the tank. Like, who do you think? Who do you think built a big steampunk ass tank? Is trying to take over the world and tearing down cities. Nazis. Nazis, of course, of course, it's Nazis. You know, the funny thing is, this is before, you know, Nazis were even Nazis, mm, <laughs> but right. they're Nazis. Yeah. You know, that's yes, what we recognize. It's pre-World War II. It's right. Like, right. right. Pre-World War I. Pre-World War I. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we ain't even using the word Nazis with them yet. But, hey, look, Nazis resonate with people, right? That's that, that's instant hatred right there, mm -hmm. even if they're not authentic, real Nazis. And the funny thing is, uh, it's not even it's not even the, the Nazis that are doing it. Like, uh, they, 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 the Germans say, Hey, we didn't have shit to do with this. How do we know? <laughs> not us. Because Germany said so. Because Germany said, not us. So, so eloquently. Yeah. Yo, man, that ain't, we ain't got shit yeah. to do with that, boy. Do we have him? Call Draper at your service, sir. That's for The world. Of course you want the world. You know, that's what all guys with us. Skull Kane and a Doctor Doom mask on, <laughs> but but that's not plausible. <laughs> How would you sustain the world? You're just one man. Shut up and just do what I say. Stop making me think about <laughs> shit. Setting up the villain, we got that out the way. So now let's get to our heroes over here, and let's start out with the main man, the main hero right here. You know the biggest name in the movie, Sean Connery as Alan Quatermain. Alan Quatermain is uh, adventurer, Indiana Jones style. In fact. I guess he influenced Indiana Jones. Sure. You know, King Solomon's Mines mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, he's approached by the British government to help figure out who's behind these terrorist attacks here. Uh, the only problem is he's living in Africa. And how do we know that he's living in, Af in, in, in oh, Africa? Shit. You know, it's what we always say. <laughs> well, we know he's in Africa because of all the black extras that are on the set. Yeah, they go looking, just walking yeah. around. Black, yeah, black that's... extras that you won't see for the rest of the movie, by the right. way. It's just that to establish that we are in black ass Africa. And I like I like the, what, what they do here because, you know, they they uh they gotta use those extras not not only to establish uh that is Africa, but also to establish the white man's authority. Oh yeah. Well that's 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 the whole thing about Alan Quartermain is like I love Africa, I hate the British Empire, I ain't never going back. I'm gonna stay here in Africa. I'm gonna stay with these <laughs> but he's living like a king there. Oh yeah, while everybody else is, you know, <laughs> living in hearts and shit. Right, right, yeah, yeah. He's over there. Well, yeah, he's pretty much just uh, taking advantage. I Man, he's the tourist <laughs> that goes <laughs> over there and just takes advantage of this shit. You know, he's probably got about five or six black girlfriends and shit running yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, got, got mining diamonds for him. Yeah, yeah living in a villa. <laughs> yeah, but he's a. Uh, but you don't see that part of Alan Quartermain, no, because he's a good guy. You know, now everybody else is an asshole. You know, so as I said, not only are these blacks there to establish. Uh, that this is Africa, because there's a lot of black people, but also to establish that, you know, some of these stuffy British guys, you know, they, they, they're they kind of assholes too, because of course, when they see a black person, they they quick, quick to exert that authority over them. Don't wander off. Fuck you. You ain't, you ain't my daddy, you ain't my master. He's like, don't wander off. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> when he comes back up, we got, yeah. 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 
I told him to stay put. <laughs> Tell him what to Which one was he? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hold my wallet and stay put. <laughs> Got it, boss. <laughs> Where did he go? Everybody like, hold on. <laughs> Was it you? You all look alike. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but don't worry because Alan Quartermain, as we said, you know he's he's not racist, man. You know he's 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 the he's the good white guy in this. Um, and you know that because uh, he lets you know right off the bat. Hey, he's that guy that lets you know. Listen, I'm not racist. I, I, I'm sure I, you know, take advantage of these black people right here, but I got black friends. <laughs> but with each past exploit, I've lost friends, white men and black. White men and black. Mostly white. Mo yeah. Well. And you won't see any of them because, like you said, they're all dead. Now, while we're talking about his friends on the subject of being Alan Quartermain's friend, you don't want to do that. You don't want to be this guy's friend. It's too dangerous. Hell no, you don't want to be his friend. <laughs> you might as well make friends with the Grim Reaper. <laughs> It'll be a lot quicker. Get over it. Yeah, that. yeah. You don't want to be this man's friend, man. It's it's a dangerous thing. You know, he now he got friends. He got friends to cover for him when he don't feel like being bothered, you know, because people want to hear stories from Alan Quartermain. They want to hear about the great exploits of Alan Quartermain. You know, and it's like it's like a guy that says, I don't feel like signing autographs today. So he just gets somebody, he pays somebody to just say, Hey, just just be me. And I'll regale you with how I found King Solomon's mines. The Empire needs you. But the question is, do I need the Empire? So you know when <laughs> real heavy business goes off, then he has to be the real Alan Quarterman. <laughs> he's, like, he's, like, he's like, you didn't tell me you were going. Yeah. <laughs> Why was well, 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 He had more luck than it looked like, look, he already bought me one drink. Let, let me get yeah, like, on, yeah. these. Because he just ordered a double, too. Yeah. He's like, God damn, let me just at least finish the drink. Right. Another one, man. Also, you, you, you didn't have to really embarrass me like that. Yeah. I, you, you knew you was going to come out and say something. <laughs> yeah. Well, Alan Quartermain said you about to say something stupid anyway. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. That's true. He I mean, was. come on, man. You could you could only play this so long. <laughs> you, you ain't had enough drinks to be me yet. But the, fun, the, the funny thing about this is that you're looking at it. Hey, you know, when you play Alan Quartermain, People start kissing your ass. You get some free drinks. It's a lot of fun. No, it is. It is a lot of fun, I imagine. While you're still alive, but when the shit goes down... Mr. Quartermain? Uh, yes, indeed, sir. <laughs> and Alan Quartermain looked over me like, oh, he's yeah. about to get shot. Oh. Well, I like those dudes in the back there saying, glad it wasn't my day to be <laughs> yeah, Alan yeah. Quartermain. <laughs> my day to be Alan <laughs> Shit, my day was tomorrow. Ooh, my, 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 shift, my shift was yesterday. <laughs> Ooh, I missed that by 24 hours. <laughs> I'm glad he took my shift over today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, you want to be out of the day? Yeah, yeah. I, I got some shit to do. I wouldn't mind taking some free drinks. I'll take up an extra shift. Yeah, why not? <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Oh, uh, uh, shit. <laughs> He's probably filling in for yeah. somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at this and you're saying, well, that, hey, look, that, that's just one guy. You know, that guy just, he's just unlucky because he said his name is Alan Quartermain. Now, the rest of the people back there who ain't saying nothing, they're okay, right? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, tell that to the ones still in the building back yeah. there because everybody died. Yo, there was a there was a, a, a bar full of people. Yep. A bar full of Alan Quartermains in yeah, there. Black people, bartenders, wait staff. Oh well, that uh, clears them out now. That clears them out completely. I, I tell you, watching this scene, I was like, man, this this movie starts off and it's so full of fake fire. That oh. that that projected After Effects fire on there. Yeah. Like as it burns down, you see that building is unharmed. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. wow. Yeah, that no, when it goes down, yeah, that building is still standing up. Like it was never touched. Not even no smudges on <laughs> no it. Smudges. Ain't even blackened or anything. I give it to the movie. <laughs> Early on when the action starts, I'm talking about how goofy this movie is, and it is, man. But the thing is, they you can't say that they didn't try to tell you early on in the film, because when the action starts, it gets real silly. <laughs> Already with the slapstick bunks yeah. and boinks boinks. and boinks. Yeah. boinks. But like Boing. that. The boinks and the bunks crashing the walls like a cartoon. I mean, listen, no one's head sounds like that. At first, I thought it was his gun. I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I said, well, maybe his gun hit the wall. Or maybe there's a ricochet. No, that was that fool's head. <laughs> Don't know yeah. if oh, head sound like that. That sounded like a bucket. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, or a spittoon. Yeah, um, yeah. Unless you were Looney Tunes or you in the banana splits or something, your, 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 your head don't sound like that when you hit a wall. 
And this is supposed to be a serious, this is supposed to be a serious action scene. That's what got me. It's like, they're not really playing up for laughs. Yeah, they, they kind of went back and forth on the tone. And they really this, did. This whole thing. Yeah, it was, it was all over the place, man. You know, this, <laughs> I, now, you need to say, vu. this is very silly right here, but I will give it to Sean Connery. You know, the, the, now he says, you know, I don't care what's going on. I'm always going to look good. I'm always going to come out looking good. Right. And he he is, I mean, I think, I mean, it's Sean Connery, you know, he's always going to be good. He's professional. He's been doing it for years. Uh, I think he's very good here. Where does your sense of patriotism? Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot who I was talking to. Uh, I was talking to the other Al Corvain. Woo, man, so I can tell him. <laughs> you, sir. God save the queen. God save the queen. God bless her. God bless her. That's about as patriotic as it gets around here. Man, you know, he's he's got a lot of great lines and a lot of great line delivery here, man. He's really good. I mean, it just goes to show you how great this guy was, how great an actor he was. Especially considering how much he hated making this movie. Yeah. Oh, man, he, yeah. That's, the, that's when you really see the talent. Yeah. It's like, I mean, he, he couldn't even muster up the strength to talk, talk nice about it at the, at the premiere. Remember, he no. felt like... Shit. No, no, the, the most famous thing about this movie is him fighting with the director the whole time. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And the director won because this came out crazy. Well, the director was even like, he hated making the movie. He's like, I didn't want to make a big movie. The studio was constantly interfering. There was nothing. He's like, I'm, I'm not making movies anymore. Yeah, in right. fact, he never made a movie again. Exactly. It was a bad experience for him. Him or the screenwriter. They never went on to make a live action, big budget studio Hollywood movie again to this day. It was so, this, this experience was so bad for everyone. Um, so, you know, the movie, the movie might be about Victorian age characters, but it does take the feel of a more modern li literary reference later on in the film, uh, which would be James Bond. Now, I'm not talking about James Bond, the agent. I'm talking about more like the MI6 organization mm -hmm. that James Bond worked mm -hmm. for. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, they work for an organization that's very similar. I'm known by many names, Mr. Quartermain. My underlings call me Sir. My superiors call me M. With the com complete with their own letter M, like uh, James Bond. You know, the, mm -hmm. the, 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 everybody goes by a single letter. You know, the head of uh, MI6 or James Bond's boss is M. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so this is, yeah, Q's the gadget guy and all that, but so this is where we start to meet the rest of the extraordinary gentlemen, like Captain Nemo. Alan Quatermain, Captain Nemo. I know of Mr. Quatermain, and I know of you, Captain. Yeah, heard you a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will give the movie credit for this. There's been so many versions of Captain Nemo where it was always played by a white, yeah. usually British guy. And it's finally like, okay, this is ethnically accurate that he's in <clears throat> Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, that's that's cool that they did that. They did, that is yeah. true. Uh, met Captain Nemo. Now you get to meet the Invisible Man. There's some parlor game. Believe it. Oh, who grabbed my ass? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who grabbed my dick? Yeah, yeah exactly. Man, Alec Quartermain does not play that shit. He, he <laughs> swore hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You up. <laughs> I do like the take on the Invisible Man here. I like what they're doing. Like you said with Captain Nemo, I like that he's uh, ethnically accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, I like what they did with the... Uh, with what they did with the with the Invisible Man, because it's not the original Invisible Man in the story. Mm -hmm. It's actually a thief, and the dumbass went and took the, the he stole the Invisible Potion right. and took it without realizing he ain't got a way to change it back. <laughs> I thought invisibility would be a boon to my work. It's bloody hard to turn back. We finally caught him, and they'll provide an antidote. <laughs> They ain't gonna get. They lied to him. Yeah, they yeah, 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 sure I know, yeah. but you look at Alec Quatermain. He's just mad the whole time. He's staring at him. Yeah. He's putting that makeup on. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Let's just get back to you. you yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah story's he, fine. He's yeah. looking at him. Now I can see your ass. Yeah, I still owe you an ass. Yeah, asshole. you should have stayed invisible instead of going in white face. And now, now I know how to beat your ass. <laughs> now I know how to now I know how to grab you. I gotta say, not a bad effect though. No, it's actually time. a very good effect, man. It's actually a very cool effect. You know, it's funny because you. Put on that cold well, cream. Well, on. <laughs> when he was, when he started putting on those, uh, when he started putting on the makeup, I thought he was about to do some coon shit. Like he, <laughs> <laughs> do some Al Jolson shit. Like, Al Jolson, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, mammy. Yeah, I thought because he, he put on the white lips first, and I yeah, thought, yeah, I thought he was doing that mammy shit. Yeah, <laughs> but the effect, the effect is cool. 
Other that, times, it's kind of silly. Yeah, we have. Even Skinner has stealth. Cheers. Okay, so uh, so how come we can't see what he had for lunch? Uh, yeah. Where, where's the shit in his intestines? Yeah, that's, you know? a, that's a whole thing where they're, they're trying to do an effect. But it's like, the way you got this played, it, it wouldn't work like it that. It don't right. make no sense. Yeah, we can't I do bet that. I you never see it again. No, you don't. No. Now, I guess what they do is they do show that once, I guess, when it gets to a certain part of his body, then it goes invisible. Cheers. Because it starts to dismiss. Yeah, no, that yeah. shit is still there. What am I talking about? It doesn't make no sense. It, you're right. That's exactly what it was. They're like, this look cool. Mm -hmm. It makes no sense, but it looks cool. Mm -hmm. Then we, you know, we, we're talking about the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, but there is an extraordinary gentlewoman that they have in here. Mina's prior acquaintance with a reluctant League member may prove useful. I'm waiting to be impressed. The fate of the... She like, bitch. She, she, now that's I a, just that, got here. That is a Sean Connery move. <laughs> to talk shit to the chick. Yeah, you know that that, that that's what's funny, is like they brought that over his real personality. That's yeah, just, yeah, I know. just sexist. Yes. Right? No, not not hello <laughs> yeah. or not not nice to meet you, but what the f you do? Yeah, why, yeah. why is there a skirt here? Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you you dumb broad. <laughs> <laughs> My dick's not gonna suck itself. Yeah. Why she yeah. Hey, easy, Alan. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what she can do. Whole order the whore. Yeah. Right, right. Excuse me? <laughs> You're hard, man. I love it. Excuse me? <laughs> You're not paid to ask questions. Right. <laughs> they bring on Dorian Gray. Now, for those who aren't familiar with Dorian Gray, creation of Oscar Wilde. Ooh, look at that pimp coat, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, he's styling, Yeah, man. get the cane, too. Yeah, got that cane? Yeah, look at oh, your wait, ass with wait, it, too. Wait, was he a villain also? <laughs> gay villain? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, Oscar Wilde was yeah, gay. Yeah, gay people were oh, villains that's back right. then. Yes, yeah. right, always made gay people so, villains. He, so. Oscar Wilde was very flamboyant, mm -hmm. almost openly gay. Not, you know, he's one of the, he's a gay icon because- Pay the price for it. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a gay icon because he was so openly gay. Mm -hmm. But he did, Right, somewhat a horror creation, and that was uh, Dorian Gray. The portrait, the, the, of, Dorian picture, of, the picture of picture of Dorian Gray. And now, I forgot the actor who played Dorian. Stuart Gray. Townsend. Stuart, yeah. Stuart Townsend. Um. So, for those who don't know Dorian Gray, what the, the character? I guess they chose him because, like I said, it's just uh, maybe it's a cool special effect or it's just another cool power they thought they could put into the movie. He has a, a, a painting, a portrait of himself, and while the port does, he he has this power where. The, the painting is almost cursed. The painting gets old. And when I say it gets old, you look at it and the, the, the person in the painting gets older every year. And it's been years, so the painting's just decrepit now. And the tricky thing is, as long as he never looks at that painting, he doesn't look at it, right? he'll stay young. But the moment he even glances at it, his ass is gone. So there's all kind of questions with that too, by I, the way. I, I don't think that was part of the original story. No, the original story was <laughs> is it, it, it ages while he stays young. Yeah, he's not yeah. immortal, but he just yeah, stays yeah. young. Yeah, That's yeah. all it is doing. Yeah, right. he stays young while the painting is old. Right, right, that, right. That, that is the original story. Right. Oh yeah, no, no, that part is. Yeah, it, yeah. It, I don't, there wasn't that thing of like, well, if you look at it, then then everything reverses. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But it was that he was just a, such an immoral being. No, he was, he was like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Yeah. yeah, you know, he has this power and he just chose to be a dick with it. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's, uh, this, this is a world too where it's like Marvel, man. You know, all these characters have kind of crossed paths or interacted with each other at some point. Gray and I have met before. Many years ago, it was Gray visiting Eden and I was the boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in case you're wondering, yeah, yeah. he ain't telling you everything. Yeah, I told you that. So, <laughs> yeah, this is also where we start to get a full body look at the main villain. Who, when you look at him at first, I was saying he looks like Doctor Doom. No, that's not the case. First meetings usually warrant introductions. Of course. No, man, that's that's MF Doom right there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa, wait a minute. And his name is actually the Phantom. I'm like, no, your name's Doom. I am the Phantom. You. They're are... like, damn, you couldn't come up with something more original than that. Know. She's like, what they're, the f they're, they're trying to hint that he's the Phantom of the Opera. But oh, is that what it that's is? That's what it is, oh. but they don't want to come out and say it. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, okay, whatever. There you go, so called extraordinary gentleman. At first, I thought that Kane was a mic and he was going to start rapping. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How his big ass. Sneaked in there with all those men and all those guns. I don't know, because mm. he came in with a ton of people, man. It's 
it's kind of explained later. Oh, is it? Yeah. Well, what's also explained when you see them is that these henchmen suck. Oh, yeah. These, these they might be stealthy. I give them that. But other than that, they're terrible. All of them. Oh, waiting. that ladder. Yeah. Oh, oh, no. shit. None of them are like, oh, shit, let me move out the way. Yeah. I mean, all that manpower, all those, because they have guns that, 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 as far as these other characters know, have not been invented yet. Automatic weapons. Mm -hmm. All those automatic weapons and can't hit shit. Right. I, I, I do love the effect. It's kind of cool, but is he just, a boat just bouncing off the Invisible Man's face? <laughs> Plot <laughs> armor, my friend. Yeah. The Invisible Man, keep in mind, he's not invisible yet. He's got on a coat. Still a big got ass on, black coat. Still got on his white face and his Al Joseph but, but lips. You, but you and see the, the, they, they ain't hitting shit off of him, man. They ain't hitting nothing. The others just jumping away. <laughs> you know, it's like, What's the use of having all this modern technology being gonna do shit with it? Mm -hmm. All these automatic weapons that just fire ammunition, you know, by the tons of it by the second. None of that, none of that is a match for Captain Nemo's bitch slap. Legs up yeah, the air. in the air. Come on. I told your ass. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> pimp handling these oh henchmen. Oh my god, right pimp man was strong. Pimp handling, pimp, pimp handling these these henchmen strong. <laughs> the what you gonna do? Yeah. <laughs> Shit, slap them so hard, they're going to need some better help, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> People, this portion of the show is brought to you by Better Help. Hey, listen, whether you're a whether you're a henchman who's been slapped on the job yeah. right there. <laughs> you know, you know, whether you're those two dudes right there, you need somebody to talk to, or you just need to organize your mind. BetterHelp is a great place to start. Thing is, there's a stigma about therapy out there. People think it's so severe, you know. People think oh, I have to be depressed, suicidal. I have to have, you know, some, some severe mental condition before I go talk to somebody. No, it's not that people consider it like exercising your body. You know, you go to a gym, you work out, you, tr you eat healthy. You know, we do all these things to the physical, but your mind can use the same thing. And I'm not talking about just, you know, doing word games and stuff like that. I'm talking about getting your mind clear, you know, talking to somebody so you can just get it out your system. And that is what BetterHelp is there for. <clears throat> now, imagine that BetterHelp can help you with, yes, those things I just mentioned, you know, you're feeling down, you know, there's something going on, it is, maybe there's something serious happening with you. But also, maybe you're having some sort of relationship problem, or you just want to organize your mind so you can do better. Sure. You can just function better in life. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything that serious, you just need to organize yourself. Clear your mind. And that is what BetterHelp is there for too. It's entirely online, so it's very flexible. You know, a lot of people, they don't feel comfortable sitting up there and talking to somebody. That's kept them from going to therapy. Mm -hmm. Now you can do a call with someone. Or you can have a video chat with someone if you want to do a face-to-face. -face. But if you don't like what you're, what you're doing or you, who you're talking to, then they'll go in and pair you up with somebody who does fit for you. I'm going to give you another incentive to try this. I gave you a lot of reasons, but here's another one. Go to betterhelp.com slash double toasted. And if you do that, you'll get 10% off your first month. I want to thank BetterHelp for coming in and sponsoring this portion of the show. And I want to thank all of you out there for your support, which you gave a lot of tonight. I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, so here's the other thing about these, uh, <laughs> here's the other thing about these henchmen. You know, they get, they get slapped like bitches. That's because they are bitches. Listen, they, they, even when they die, they just scream like bitches when they're falling. Yeah. Ah. Ah. <laughs> so wait, but was that a scream or was that a question? Yeah. Ah. Ah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? like Orson Welles in that, in that Wagner yeah. version. Oh, oh, the crunch. <laughs> ah. So I'm going to tell you something. As I was watching this, and I'm not talking about some of the parts that you've seen. I'm talking about even earlier than the parts, some of the parts that you've seen here. Uh, after watching some of this, I was like, man, this, this is not terrible. 
I mean, it's goofy, you know, that the, yeah. the, the, the henchmen suck, but most movie henchmen do. You know, the, the the vibe I was getting from this was sort of a Van Helsing vibe. Oh, very much so. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very, very, very much. Yeah, Van Helsing, the reason why they had those in common, <clears throat> uh, taking literary figures and putting them into sort of this uh, steampunk sci-fi mm -hmm. fantasy action mm -hmm. film. Uh, pretty much the same thing. Yeah. The lighting is almost identical. It could the, be in the, the same world. I'm telling you. It could be in yeah. the same universe. Yeah, it's, it's very much Van Helsing uh, vibes right here. Plus, this is not a bad idea. You know, getting these famous Victorian age fantasy and horror creatures from literature and making them a super team. It's that's a fun idea. You know, it's it, it's it, for some people who love literature, they might take umbrage at this. Oh, how they dare how dare they sully these classic characters? But so what, man? Yeah, and they got that Mister Hyde crossover. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah they, that's true. Both yeah, of them had Mr. Hot. Yeah. <clears throat> they're both big giant ass gorillas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One could argue <clears throat> if, you've, if you're a literary buff, you might actually be excited to see this. Yeah. Yeah. One might argue that. Yeah. Well, I guess there's a Dracula <laughs> connection also. There is. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Me like, and Harker. Yeah. They hint yeah. that Dracula might have been a part of. Uh, of the team, or maybe uh, and, Mia and Harker's husband. Right, yeah, uh, Jonathan yeah. Harker. Yeah, Jonathan Harker, so it, there's some connection there. But there, and there's this cool e Easter eggs in this too. You know, if, again, if you- It's if, full of Easter eggs. Yeah, if you're a literary buff, I mean, you still have to appreciate that they kind of came in and tried to cleverly work in some of the, uh, some Easter eggs from other literature references. This is my first mate. Call me Ishmael, please. You know, that's from uh, Moby Dick right there. Yeah. For those that, that read and uh, step in my roles, right? Yeah. <laughs> also, there's a uh, there's a lot of uh, just stuff in the background. I really like this scene where they had the posters where they say Mars may have volcanoes, mm -hmm. and then you see Alan Moore's name and Kevin O'Neill's name, the, the the artist and the writer mm -hmm. of the of the comic. That is, uh, you know, Mars may be volcanoes. That's from uh, Mars. Uh, 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 what is it? Uh, uh, a princess of Mars. No. Uh, oh, is it oh from War of the Worlds. War of the Worlds. Yeah. 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 It's another H.G. Wells story. Mm -hmm. It's a War of the Worlds reference. Which is different. <clears throat> but yeah, it's... Uh, so I appreciate a lot of this. But again, mostly this would have had the Avengers and would have I, I, I would have been the Avengers before the Avengers came out. I mean, of course, the Avengers existed before. But as far as on the big screen and having that super team team up, they would have beat the Avengers by nine years if they had done that. Uh, I mean, right down to even having... Very similar characters. They had their own Hulk on the team. Yeah. Stay back if you value your life. <laughs> Which those guys obviously don't. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's like, okay, so you guys can't map out his arm span? No, that's like. <laughs> Stop poking him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you might calm down. <laughs> yeah, they keep doing it like he ain't done nothing yet. I mean, I guess they did it with yeah. King Kong, so. <laughs> yeah. You know, and. And the thing with this is that, man, you know, it's uh, there's a lot of good ideas that are going on, and in a, in, a, in, in a very good-natured, goofy way, at, at the beginning of this movie, and kind of maybe slightly halfway through, it's actually I, I'm having fun with it. But the thing about this movie, it's not just dumb; it gets to a point where it's Hollywood dumb, because Hollywood steps in. Hollywood dumb is a whole different kind of dumb. Hollywood is it was where they look at something and they say, yes, this is dumb, but not dumb enough. It's they, not, you know, we, we want to get stupid with this. They, they, they go, well, it's nice what you've done here. Not that we really looked at it, but you needed to do this and it needs to do this and it needs to do this. So make it yeah, happen. It, All right, we're out. Literary figures don't know. I don't even want to hear that word. Literary? What? Yo, booby. Hey, we're making a movie, not a book. All right, mm -hmm. people are here to read, okay? People are here to escape. People are here to look at dumb things, like explosions, like special effects, creatures and monsters, and every now and then maybe a tit or two. You oh. know, that's what people want. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. You Get out of here with your books. You went from Jewish to Italian yeah, to Italian to like you went this. Boobie, and then you uh, went to this love Boobala. <laughs> Boobala. But it, yeah, it was so like everything you're doing that re refers back to the literary world, stop that. Yeah, Take don't it out. nobody want that. Tell you what, go back, take out all this smart shit, add more stupidity up in here. Take out all the smart shit. Take out the smart shit, more explosions, more monsters, more titties, more ass, more werewolves, or whatever you're putting in the movie. Boom, right there, hit. And that's what they did. They sucked everything that was kind of clever out the movie. And believe me, once it really does hit Hollywood level dumb, it's it, that's when it starts to get bad. Because it just it doesn't make any sense anymore. There, where they did all this setup, 
Mm-hmm. They did all this background and development for these characters. They really traded that out for action. That's what they wanted. This is a superhero, you dumb. This is a superhero movie, you dumbass. You know, it, it's not. It's not a book. It was a product of the time, and I don't mean the Victorian age of the two thousand three when they oh, were making God, superhero yeah. movies. And they were like, "There's a formula to these things, and you guys got to get on that formula." Yeah, that shit is what it was, man. Uh, and, and you know, they 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 took something that was already born a uh, uh, bordering on dumb. And just made it worse because there were a lot of things in the beginning of the movie that were not good. I mean, for one, the dialogue was terrible. I mean, so many people were either yelling out obvious <laughs> or dumb things or both. They're indestructible. OK, number one, they're not. Right. People just ain't taking headshots, <laughs> which is crazy because Alan Quartermain is supposed to be an expert marksman. Yeah, he's a crack shot. Ooh, my ass. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh <laughs> shit, you got me. So I was like, well, how come you ain't taking no headshots? Cause that's what, I mean, they, that, they're obviously, they're obviously wearing uh, 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 chest plates, but even if they were indestructible, we see that. You ain't gotta yell, ain't it, gotta out. yell it out. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. indestructible. Yeah, no shit. I'm right here. You know what? Shut your ass. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what? <laughs> That'd be hilarious to watch the hero do something like that. One of the biggest mistakes they did was adding a character that was not needed at all. And you are? Special Agent Sawyer of the American Secret Service. Yes, people, as in Special Agent Tom Sawyer. Yeah, God. The, not only was, not only was uh, Tom Sawyer not in the comic <laughs> or the graphic novel, but he ain't got no powers. He ain't got no real skills. I mean, think about it. Tom Sawyer could even pay the fence. I was going to say he would go to whitewash the fence yeah. like a mother. Now, now I, I, I will say this in some later books, Mark Twain did write some detective story, like Tom Sawyer as a detective. OK, well, I stand corrected, but yeah. he still don't. But, but this here, suddenly he's a secret agent. And you're right. He has no powers. And you go like, well, Alan Quartermain ain't got powers, but Alan Quartermain can fight and he can shoot. And Tom Sawyer can't shoot for shit. Yeah, Alan Quartermain's <laughs> like, give me that goddamn gun. He's like, let me show you. What, let me try to use this Yeah, because he, he can't hit. No. He can't do nothing. He's like, well, you just keep firing until you hit something. And, Alan, and most times yeah. you still don't hit anything. And even Alec Quartermain <laughs> hinted that, listen, I, I might have some voodoo powers. <laughs> you know, yeah. I might have some voodoo yeah. powers that keep that 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 protects me and just makes me lucky. You ain't got shit. <laughs> I might have some Remember, voodoo why are you here? Yeah. I might have some voodoo powers from all the Africans I murdered yeah. <laughs> back in the village. Oh, I had sex with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, little, little bit of that voodoo ass. <laughs> Takes me a long way. Uh, yeah, I had that sex voodoo. with a witch doctor. Yeah. He helped me out. <laughs> you had voodoo ass? A little bit of voodoo ass goes a long way. <laughs> but this <laughs> little he doesn't know how to shoot or anything. You know, this this guy. Yeah, he was crowbarred in because they were he, like, it's it's all these British people. It, America's not going to respond to that. We got to have a, an American It's in the here. most, it's, it's, it's amazing what they did here. It, it, it's, it, it, it is, it is uh, both egotistical and condescending at mm-hmm. the same time. Yes, yes. Oh, it is. And you, and you said yeah. they, won't, they, won't, they won't relate? Yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was, that's what I was going to say. Oh, because 20 years ago in the theater when he goes, Agent Sawyer. The whole theater went, you got it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, everybody groaning. Everybody. I remember this. It was 20 years oh, yeah. ago. I still remember this. Everybody <laughs> laughed at this. Yeah, everybody was laughing it. and groaning. They, they, this is the dumb decisions that they made. They said, you know what? All these British assholes in here. Nobody. Who, what American wants to see that? Let's go ahead and put in uh, Tom Sawyer. So, you know, Americans can relate. It really is the most condescending and at the same time <laughs> egotistical thing in yeah. the world. And people are saying, well, listen, come on. Think about it. Nobody wants to see any British people on screen. What about James Bond? Shut up. <laughs> you always say something at the wrong time. Yeah. <laughs> the problem here is that since Tom Sawyer ain't really got no skills, you know, he's got no powers like these other magical beings up in here, you know, these fantastical characters. They, you know, the besides, you know, shooting a gun, I guess, which he doesn't do very well. Since he doesn't have any of those skills that those other characters have, they just have him doing dumb shit. Things that don't make no sense. Really don't. <laughs> because he's the American. Because he's, he's the, the really he's, he's the dumbass. Y'all said we needed somebody to relate, and y'all just made him the dumbest character in here. I mean, you tried to make him a badass, but it doesn't make any sense. You have him doing dumb things. Like he was not, he wasn't even there when they introduced the automobile. You know, he wasn't he wasn't even in the movie yet. Mm-hmm. But they go to Venice. And when they get to Venice, he drives that 
that six wheeled automobile like he's Vin Thank Diesel. You. <laughs> 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 for a spin. <laughs> I mean, he's never seen a car before. <laughs> That's true. He said like, he's like he's Vin Diesel, boy. He's I mean, With family. Yeah. Let's go for a spin. I mean, it's shit. all of a sudden you go like, well, it's big and it's loud and he's American, so of course it's going to work out. Uh, yeah. And you know, that, that and that's the crazy thing with this. Like, I mean, it really does turn into a Fast and Furious movie. He's driving this like he's been in F1 or something. You must turn left to get ahead of the car. Oh, oh! Ah! He must have told that we were coming. That's the moment. I'm like, what kind of physics is that? That car's going 60 and you just like step out and do a little jig. I like the way he <laughs> that little stumble here. Look at this. Shove out the buffalo. Yeah, little tap dance when he got it. I gotta be me. Oh. <laughs> 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 like, 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 Play me off, Johnny. <laughs> but I love it. Here's how this plan is supposed to work. So. It's, it's almost like Tom Sawyer crashed the car on purpose because when he goes, when, when he, he jumps the car, what he's supposed to do is he's supposed to see a, send off a flare and let them know in the fire or something. There it is right there. So he jumps his car, dukes the heads and stuff, sends off a <laughs> flare and doesn't give a shit to the angle that the car is going in. Shit. Keep in mind, people, this is a convertible. You already see that shit is almost, mm, yep. is almost vertical right Both now. The Duke boys and guns. <laughs> Again, Tom Sawyer ain't got no powers, all right? Landed upside down. Yeah. I'm all right. I'm yeah. good. But keep in mind, not only did he survive, people, I don't want to hear no excuses from you. Not only did he survive that crash in the convertible going upside down that nobody with no powers would survive, but... Survive that explosion. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't care who he was. He was not getting out of that blast zone. He did run slowly away. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you, yeah, if you look right there in, the, in, in that yeah, little yeah. dot, that's him. Yeah. I mean, you also got to look at Nemo. Yeah, okay, you got a submarine in a Victorian age, but it launched an intercontinental ballistic missile. Yes. <laughs> they don't care. They, don't, they really they don't, don't care. care. They don't care anymore. They said, we just want the action. Just yeah. keep it going. Mm -hmm. he'll, that boy will be all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll be fine. Yeah, just have him come out and do it. <clears throat> brush it off. He'll be yeah, okay. No, that, that was one where I would thought, okay, this is where... Everybody mourns him, and uh, Alan Quartermain was looking at him like he was his replacement his son, son. Yeah, and it's gonna be sad. It's like he just came out like, <coughs> yeah. so what are we doing next? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was cool. Let's do it again. <laughs> yeah, and let's also now this might be a nitpick. <laughs> yeah, just brush it off. Just brush that dirt off your shoulders. You're gonna be all right. <laughs> hey guys, everybody okay? Yeah. How you? <laughs> all right. You yeah, yeah. How are you still alive? Yeah. I will tell you this, they are like the Avengers, man. They tear up every city that they go to. They tore Venice up. I mean, the city's gone. Seriously, it's gone. Oh, yeah. The whole city, this is, there's a shot where you just see the city collapse. You're welcome. <laughs> but hey, don't worry because it's a good thing that everybody was at a festival because no one was home. <laughs> no one, no one died when the whole city came down. Everybody's at that festival. When they were going through the city, no lights were on, no people were running. They, they, everybody's fine. There's mass destruction all around them and nobody takes off their mask. No, no, they, they don't. And they, they keep partying. Yeah, they keep partying. <laughs> you find out that, uh, that M is is actually MF Doom, the guy that's supposed to be the the the, the, the organization leader, the MI six guy. Yeah, the guy. You. You know, I said the same thing. You. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, that's like an honest reaction from him. Like, You're like what? Why, why, why'd you even why? bother to get us together? Or, or yeah. put the prosthetics on your face. Yeah, you yeah. could have just had the, the mask on. Yeah, why do you, exactly. Why did you do this? I mean, you have the means to just do what you want to do. You didn't, in fact, getting us together 
ruin your plans. Yeah, I was in Africa chilling. Yeah, you could, you could have started World War One. I, I wouldn't have given. And I shit. wouldn't have given. I, I, I said at the beginning of the movie, I don't care. And also, I recognized Richard Roxburgh doing the voice, and it just a little deeper, the old gravity. I, mean, I was like, this is clearly him. But anyway, that is Richard Roxburgh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This shit gets just dumber and dumber. <laughs> now that we have his big reveal, the M stands for another literary figure. Or would you prefer Professor James Moriarty? So James Moriarty, Sherlock Holmes' nemesis. He went from being Sherlock Holmes' nemesis to being a Bond supervillain mm -hmm. on a ridiculous level. Right. Yeah. Because he don't just have a lair now to, 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 to have his world domination uh, plans actually come to fruition. You know, he just can't do it with a couple of guys. He's got to have not just a lair. You know, with a cat and all that, he's got to have a factory to make weapons and, and make armor for his troops. Furnaces produce iron for making M's weapons of destruction. They're pieced together on the factory floor by a private army of ruthless men who share his vision. And you got all these tin men. Yeah, that's just kind of like, okay, where the f did all this? I know, it's so overblown. I mean, where did you get this? And he even has... He's got all these scientists. Now, at least they explained that. At least, you know, yeah. he, they showed him kidnapping a scientist and the scientists are, you know, because it's that easy. They're all just making the, they're making drug versions. Like they're actually, it's a, they're, they're, they're drug manufacturers. They're cooking. You know, they, they're making drug versions of all the powers of, mm -hmm. uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the league, of right, extraordinary right, gentlemen. Right, right. They're making Jekyll and Hyde powers. They're making vampire powers. They're making invis invisibility potions. Uh, Useless uh, powers. I guess like they're Tom making, Thor. yeah, I guess they're making Dorian Gray paint. <laughs> so you can <laughs> paint with that and make yourself young again. The scientists are forced to work night and day to make new versions of us. Invisible spies, an army of hides, vampiric assassins. Since they were making drugs, I want all the scientists to be stripped down of their underwear. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like a crack Yeah, yeah, yeah crack dead. That's the yeah. with masks on. Somebody saw, uh, somebody saw his, uh, his, his factory with all those uh, troops on there and somebody said, Cobra! <laughs> uh, yeah, Victorian see. Cobra. Yeah, Victorian Cobra. That's very, very good. But in, in all that, that crazy looking ar metal armor that you know is too heavy to move around. <laughs> Somebody said, this sounds like a Wolfenstein store. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, we're making versions of us. The vampiric, the invisible man. Tom Sawyer was like, they better not be trying to get. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Uh, you good, man. You good, man. Don't yeah. nobody want to do your bullshit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just out the yeah. way. What? <laughs> Can't do nothing no way. Hope nobody takes my fishing pouch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody yeah. This shit, bro. Me and Engine Joe. Nobody want this. Yeah. <laughs> Dorian Gray is also revealed as a villain. Now, I'd say that that was a little bit of a twist going on because I, I don't remember that part in the movie. And it did kind of get me with that. It, it does get you. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the whole time they're like, man, that invisible man, he's a, he's a thief. He done, he done ripped off everybody. He yeah. better be glad he left. And I was <laughs> like that too. I'm like, yeah. I thought it was him. No, it was it was because everybody thought that it was. The Invisible Man, man. that stole the potions and, and was selling it to the bad guy, just ran off with it to just sell it to who? Or, or take it and just try to do some dumb shit He's with that. He's a goddamn thief anyway. Yeah, that's all he does. Uh, no, it was Dorian Gray the whole time. That bastard Skinner. Lot to answer for. Skinner? Me. And apparently, Ishmael is a bad tougher than 50 Smith, uh, 50 Smith, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 Smith, 50 Smith, he's tougher than 50 Smith, man, he, how, how many bills do you take, like about five, two, two. four, yeah, five, they, yeah, come, Christ tricked us all, well it's a good thing he lived long enough to tell them that, I know, because right. <laughs> right after he did that, he, he fought his way there to do it, yeah, by the, <laughs> by the way, people want an album now by 50 Smith. <laughs> we might have to make a rapper called 50 Smith after this. <laughs> so anyway, early on when you were like, how did all these dudes just sneak into Gray's house? Yeah. He was a double agent, so he let them in. Oh, he's uh, that's right. That's right. Of course. Oh, okay. Of course. That's stupid me, man. No, I don't get it. <laughs> You're so stupid. This plot is stupid. I know, but I, I should have caught that. That's, right, that, that. That was true. I didn't think, I didn't make the connection. Mm -hmm. You probably uh, forgot they were at his house. I, 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 I was just, you know, I was in the moment. Mm -hmm. whatever, I wasn't thinking, I wasn't thinking in the past of the movie or anything like that. I was just, whatever they're doing now, whatever dumb shit they're doing at the moment, I'm just here. But, you know, uh, once Dorian turns into a villain, man, once he goes full villain, 
Uh, he had nothing to lose. He went full stupid with his stuff, man. Because <laughs> cause he came in and hit like his dialogue wasn't wasn't it wasn't great before because he was laying it on thick because he was very feminine. But <laughs> <laughs> he was kind of fun. But before. no, he was fun. <laughs> yeah. But once he became full of villain, like his dialogue just got crazy. To that end, I set my wolf among you, sheep. Growl. Growl. Oh my God. <laughs> oh yeah, that growl. whole thing, they make a recording just to rub it in their faces. Yeah. Like, growl. Like, here's my whole plan and how I tricked you. <laughs> he should have made a record. That man made a My man made an album. Yeah. He, made, he, just made, he went out, he went out and made a record just to rub it in their faces, just to talk shit. And by the way, give give them information that they didn't need to know. Right. He just again just uh, you know, pretty much sabotaging himself. And if the di- if his dialogue wasn't bad, well, you'll be proud of him on this one, man. He's, he came in with those puns. Crystal senses dotted about. <laughs> bon voyage. Oh, I, 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 I grow like at like that. the way your jokes are bombing right <laughs> yeah, now. Right, right, right. Something. That's what someone to their record said. No, that's enough yeah. of that shit. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Look, he got us, y'all. Yeah. But I ain't got to listen to this yeah. show. Yeah, that was the Ice Cube No Vaseline that they <laughs> said. <laughs> 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 but this record is playing a signal yeah. that'll set off bombs in your ship. And um, well, I guess if you turned it off, it wouldn't yeah. work. Right. <laughs> Since you're not doing that. <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he just got ridiculous, man. Although, I don't know. I thought his death scene was cool because it, it was stupid. First of all, I why, why are you looking at it? Because she picks up the picture. He first thing he does, like, oh, shit, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Nah. <laughs> First of all, he ain't even in pain. He's just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like he's so vain. He's like, oh my god, is oh, like, this is what I'm gonna look like? But it's also, <laughs> close his eyes, man. Yeah, that's yeah. He could have just, you know, averted his, his attention to something else. Like goddamn. Yeah, yeah. She's like, she's like, she like goddamn. I didn't know that was gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, for real. She's like, oh. I thought he was just gonna have a heart attack yeah. or something. I thought he was gonna like start melting and shit. Cause she did have that like, I mean, I figured we'd fight, but we'd fuck at least one more time. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, oh, so much for that. Does he hit it? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Hyde, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Mr. Hyde, they just, he just turns good for no reason. Bravo, Edward. Bravo. Yeah, I did good. <laughs> Yeah, there, there, there was something. There was something that that was made it him the kinda, sound that was making him go crazy. It, it kind of was, <laughs> and some uh, it, like he had done something earlier that that actually helped, and he started feeling good about it. Yeah, yeah. was he guilty about something the whole well, time? Well, but but see, he helped. He helped free these guys from drowning. But even that came out of nowhere. Yeah, he because he wouldn't get Mister Howe wouldn't give a shit. True, you know. True. So his his motivation for even going in and saving them didn't make any sense. Yeah, it. it I think it, it might have been that that um, that that, uh, that 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 sonic. That it was tone. a ringing in his ears, yeah. and he just wanted to stop. So because I know before that, uh, Doctor Jekyll was just like, "Damn, that vampire chick is is hot," and and I was like, "Man, she ain't gonna look at you, but you let me out. Let me out. We can have her." Yeah, he sure and was he doing was like, that. Just leave me alone. All right. You know your dick is hard. I know, but just let me know. We both know, okay? Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think his motivation was well explained. Hey, well, you know, I, I, I can, honestly, by this time in the movie, who cares? It's, it's, it's the least of the of the sins no, that are going on. It was on. just that he just changed. He just wanted to do a good deed for for no re, for no good reason out of nowhere. So I just thought like you know that this is how this is how fast things are moving in the it's movie. It's moving fast, but there was something he did good. <laughs> And Alan Quatermain praised him for it. He uh, was like, "See, see, see what oh. happens when you do good." Was, was it him or was it the Invisible no, Man? No, it was, it was Mr. Hyde. Because I know he did that to the Invisible Man. He too. did, He's, he did, but he did Mr. Hyde too. Okay. He was like, "See, Edward, you, 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 you got a hero. You say you're not a hero, but you, you know, you got some good in you." Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not arguing with anything. But for me, that's just kind of like that's all it took. I'm, this this dude who's I know. his inherent nature is to be evil. I it know. just took Alan Quartermain to be like, hey man, you all right? Oh shit! You hear what he said? Yeah, I know. I'm gonna be good now. I know. You know, it's like it's like uh, like the the bad guy Wolf. You're like, oh, you're a good boy. I'm a good boy. Oh, I, li- I like yeah. that. Oh yeah. 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 Uh, also, listen. I know they want to move things along. 
this is probably me nitpicking, but for the invisible man to be fully invisible, he's got to be naked. And there's a scene where he's naked, all right, but he's in the freezing cold. Everybody got coats on and everything. He's just out there just... You can see snow just falling on him, man. Out there just, and, and, and it's freezing cold weather. What is nigga? And he, he just mentioned like, hey, let me get inside because I'm cold. <gasps> I've been waiting a week to do that. Get a grip, man. <laughs> I just, I just did. did. <laughs> Well, you know, I guess sexual assault keeps you warm. Yeah, I don't know about that cold stuff. You know, I didn't buy that. But I tell you what, he acted appropriately when his ass got set on fire. Oh, yeah. Sawyer! Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> he was booking. He sure, he sure was. And right? he lived through that. Man, that was a moment. Yeah, they show... I, was like, I was like, those are third degree burns. And, you, you, you're dead. And they show him like he is cooked. Yep. Like apparently when you... When you're invisible, but you get cooked, they show like the fried chicken scan on you, where you uh, chicken skin. yeah, where you yeah, where you got roasted. Let me see, cause they show it. It's actually kind of a cool looking scene, but the movie, it's doing some uh, it, it does some cool things in there, even near the end, and sometimes in the middle of the movie, there's just bright moments in there of what this movie could have been, or moments that would have been a lot cooler had the movie been better. It it seems kind of hokey, but I I really love the idea of of uh, the villains getting a hold of the, the hide potion mm -hmm. and drinking it. And then we get like this big Red Hulk versus- Yeah, uh, Red Hulk. Yeah, yeah, Red Hulk versus uh, Mr. Hyde fight. <laughs> You're like, damn, why don't you go down, man? <laughs> Death by a thousand cuts. Yeah, I thought, and I seriously thought this, I, the, the movie's so silly that when he was cutting them, I thought he was gonna pull back and the Red Hulk was just going to just like, <laughs> drop the pieces. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, like licorice. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I did like how they killed off Sean Connery in this. May this new century be your son. Damn, you died so hard, they almost broke that chair. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> but he was like, this new world is not for me. <laughs> you got automobiles yeah, yeah. And, and, and automatic weapons and, oh, like I'm and out this chicks day. on the team. I it, ain't, it, I ain't it, done. It's almost like a metaphor for the way he felt after yeah, doing yeah, this movie. Yeah, trying to get this movie. Yeah, he's just like, I don't understand this shit. I turned down Lord of the Rings for this. I don't know how to do this anymore, apparently. Yeah. Thing is, somebody <laughs> exactly. said, because I said they killed him off. And some people are saying, or oh, did they? And I know what you're thinking because near the end, they, they find some magical <laughs> and do some voodoo. Oh, shit, and, yeah. And they, you know, like, they're kind of hinting that, hey, if the movie's a success, oh, well, I ain't gonna be back. And it was like, no. The, I, I think this movie could have been a rousing success and Alan wasn't coming back. No, he, yeah. yeah, this movie could have made all the money in the world, could have been the number one movie in the world and he wasn't, he wasn't gonna do this no. again. No, he did. Fortunately, he didn't have to worry about that because the movie made money, but not enough for them to make another uh, another sequel. Yeah, so. it got bad reception in the U.S., but it, it made its it made a profit overseas. Yeah, mm -hmm. it made money around the world. A lot of them so, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what that's what Sean Connery said. No, I'm good. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, folks. Yeah, this movie made him quick acting. That's how bad he the experience that he had with this. So no, he was not coming back. So you can take all that boot and shove up your ass. I mean, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Find a lookalike or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when Alan Quarterman comes back, people are like, "Whoa, you look different." You yeah, know? right. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, reincarnated, you know, they, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you come back exactly. younger as Sam Neill or yeah, something. Yeah, do Doctor <laughs> Doctor Who rules and shit. Yeah. Every time you come back, you look Yo like a different Alan Quarterman. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, bring, you can, yeah, bring back another younger Alan yeah. Quarterman. I'm an Alan Quarterman from a different century on a different time. You know, all that kind of bullshit. There you are. Yeah, but uh, there you go, folks. There it is. Yes.